What's up guys? I am Michael McAnally and this is Leo the Hiking Dog. For the last year, we have been planning and preparing for this through hike of the Appalachian Trail. Thank you for joining our adventure. If you are enjoying the journey, please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. We would be super thankful. Good morning. Day 13. We're up and out uh, about 6.15 and trying to get this day started. We're walking by moonlight and headlamps right now. The wind's picked up a little bit. I don't know if that weather's gonna come in early or not today. Uh, we'll see, but we're ready to deal with it either way. All right, we are continuing our climb. Pretty much socked in by clouds. So really didn't get a sunrise this morning to show you guys, but the moon is still out. Um, but the, the, the sky's lighting up now, so we're finally getting some, some light. We got a lot of miles to do today. I'm gonna show you guys as much as we possibly can and keep you up to date. We're really missing Leo today. Um, I know, uh, I'll show you guys some pictures and stuff at the beginning of this video, uh, how well he's been taken care of. So I know that he's good to go. But all right, we're gonna get some more miles in. I'm gonna show you guys some of this beautiful, beautiful trail now that's laying out. Currently standing on Rocky Top, Rocky Top Mountain. This is what the uh, the song is made from. Rocky Top, Tennessee. This is it right here. No views, just clouds, but there are lots of rocks. <laughs> See the uh, the shrubs here look like they've been groomed perfectly for this trail, like one of those mazes on a movie. We just passed 5,500 feet, which is the highest elevation so far on the AT, for us at least. I've hiked higher in Colorado, yet. Um, oh, it's different here in the Smoky Mountains. I love it. The weather's holding up for us so far. Hopefully it continues to hold up. But man, look at this path. It just looks perfectly groomed. Like... The landscaper came out here and just cut the trail for us <laughs> the way that it goes through here. All right, let me pop tart my mustache. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about these pop tarts. Oh, I never thought I was going to get sick of any trail food and everything else that I'm eating is, is good. But the corners of pop tarts are so dry because there's no stuffing in there and when there's no stuffing in there and you're trying to eat a pop tart while you're walking you get dry mouth and it's disgusting so i'm gonna have to come up with a different alternative in the morning once my pop tarts run out once my wife stops sending those to replace pop tarts in the morning now in the morning i eat i have a jumbo honey bun and then i have the pop tarts while i'm walking right so I slam the honey bun down first thing, and then I have the pop tarts when I'm walking. And then every, but everything else I eat during the day is not really sugary based. I mean, I have my four bars, which uh, I have a lar bar, a pro bar, um, and I have two cliff bars during the day. And then I have my ramen and my tuna packets for lunch. And then I have a protein bagel with peanut butter salami and cheese which you guys have seen if you've watched my videos which is my recovery meal for dinner lots of proteins lots of fats uh, help my body recover while i'm sleeping so any suggestions for a replacement for pop tarts in the morning 
I'm open to. So y'all leave me some comments down below of some suggestions. Now it has to be two things, right? I have to be able to eat it while I'm walking because um, that's a requirement for second breakfast. I don't stop. I eat while I'm walking. So it has to be prepackaged and I have to be able to eat it while I'm walking. And also, you know, it has to be able to go in my pocket. Obviously, it needs to be in a prepacked container. I am not going to prepare it. Um, I'm not going to prepare something to eat while I'm walking. I don't prepare anything in the morning. That helps me keep my morning routine clean and simple. So, all those suggestions be put down below. And I'm uh, looking forward to reading them when you guys see this video. made up a big climb the clouds have lifted and we just got that amazing beautiful view Whew. it's gonna be a beautiful day Some has come out and we're getting some beautiful amazing views again hopefully this holds up for the rest of the day or at least until we get to the shelter I don't mind if it rains after that but we probably won't get the shelter closer to four or five o'clock today the uh, it's been a lot slower going today than it was yesterday um, just because your ascents take time but then also with certain descents you also you have to take real time and watch where your foot placement is the uh, last thing you want to do is slip and fall and end your hike early so uh, being really careful on these descents because they are kind of rocky a lot of slate rocks up here uh, and when it's wet you can step on the wrong thing or you can step on a loose rock or you can step on some loose leaves or roots there's just so many hazards out here that's the reason why a lot of times you guys see me holding the camera i'm looking down because i'm watching my feet more than anything but but just see that just every now and then you gotta look up because it's absolutely beautiful it's absolutely beautiful the smoky mountains can be treacherous but we are super lucky and super blessed because it's been absolutely gorgeous so far. All right, we have a good 15 more miles to get in today. We're getting close to five. So I'll give you guys an update in a bit. All right, we are coming up on our fourth shelter of the Smokies. Man, all these shelters seem really, really nice. I mean, if you close these things in, they could be little cabins up here. But here we go. They look pretty much like the rest. A little dirty. Uh, some people lift stuff up here. That's not cool. But this is the forest shelter here in the Smokies. This is also where I start my cold soak and get ready for lunch. So I gotta figure out where the water is. All right, that was Derek's knob shelter. Siler's Bald is the neck shelter. But that is the fourth shelter on into the Smokies. They all are pretty much identical. They're, you know, the stone structures with the fireplace off to the side, two platforms that hold up to, they sell, tw say, 12 people. So they've all pretty much looked identical since we've been out here. No privy at that one. There was a privy at the one that we stayed at last night. 
And Tyler said they're supposed to be a privy at the one that we're stopping at tonight. But the miles have not come easy today. By this time yesterday, we were pushing closer to 10 and we're just passing 6 now. A little bit more elevation, a little bit more climbs. I said the trail gives and the trail takes away. So hopefully it's in a given mood for the rest of the day. Let's see. We'll get these miles in. We are about nine miles into the day now. I needed to take a, a pack off break. We've got 7.4 miles to Klingman's Dome. I'm really hoping that the weather holds out and that we get these views when we get up there. Not very many people get views from Klingman's Dome, but I'm hoping that we do. But yeah, 7.4 miles from Klingman's Dome, um, which we will make today. And then the uh, shelter is beyond that. So it's going to be a long day, no matter what we do. Um, so I'm just going to take my time, walk at a healthy pace, and just keep moving. That's all you can do is just keep moving. All right, we are coming up, oh, a whole lot of climbing to get to Sather's Bald Shelter. Man, that was a tough three miles to get here. It just seemed like it would never get here. And there was just always another little uphill or another little uphill or another little uphill. So, I got a bear box here. Is that more military supplies? But anyway, all right. I'm gonna stop here for lunch, take a break off our feet, and show you guys this shelter. All right, this one's got a little bit different stone walls. Let's see what the layout looks like. Oh, it's got the tarp hanging. Oh, there's some people hey, here. Happening? What's going on? Okay, so they got the tarp up here because obviously it's a little windy. Uh, top of this climb, and it's got the same. Uh, like fire or uh, stove and everything, everything else you got. What's up, brother? All right. I just got here like uh, 10 minutes ago. Uh, oh. Four or five guys took off. Hey, this is I was getting here. Hey, how are oh. you? Good. Huh. All right. Just finished up lunch here at Sowers Bald Shelter. We got a little bit of a climb up to Sowers Bald and then a lot of a climb up to Klingman's Dome. So it's going to be about 4.4 miles to Klingman's Dome. Looks like it's going to be a late night tonight, but that's what I put in for when you put in for a 20 mile day uh you're gonna have to take the terrain that comes with you this is also going to be our largest day of elevation uh, where we did like 5,575 feet of elevation when we did the noc climb with uh 
Jacob Slatter. Well, today we're going to hit over 6,000 feet of elevation in one single day. It's been brutal, but we're going to take our time and just not try to kill ourselves. But if we have to hike into the late evening, that's okay. We'll go ahead and do that. down Siler's Falls, got this beautiful ridge line um, right through the trees. You can see the, this amazing view, just an amazing view. I imagine Klingman's Dome is going to be an amazing view, but it's also going to be a lot of work to get there, but we're going to do it. We're going to make it happen. Hopefully I get there before sunset. I'm not going to wait on sunset. Once I get there, we're going to make the climb, get it over and get to camp because all I want to do when I get to camp tonight is crawl into my sleep system, eat some food, crawl into my sleep system, and get some rest. And it's gonna, it's been a long day so far. Um, the train just slows you down tremendously. Yesterday was cruising, today is definitely uh, go as fast as you can. Clean is done 4.3 miles. 4.3 miles to Klingman's Dome. Normally, I can do a little over two miles an hour. I don't know if we're gonna get that going to Klingman's Dome. And the section of the forest just changed. And they're like all mossy ground. Kind of cool how it dramatically changed from the brown and the leaves on the trees to like moss covered everything just out of nowhere all right just left the uh, double springs gap shelter uh, I didn't show you guys that shelter sorry there was a whole bunch of people there they were more college kids on spring break which is awesome that they're out here playing in the woods rather than doing something stupid I like to see that when young people doing good things but we're making this last climb up to Klingman's Dome. A couple more miles. The forest has kind of changed into that green, mossy, kind of really cool looking scene. So I'm enjoying that. Although I'm not going to enjoy this climb. I think we're going up about 1,500 feet of elevation over the next two miles. So it's not going to be straight up like a Jacob Slatter. However, it's going to be a constant up for two miles. All right, we're going to get this thing done. And we are going to have a view at Klingman's Dome. We are not going to have rain. I'm speaking it right now. Not going to have rain. We're going to have a view to show you guys. So this big long day is worth it. We are one mile from Klingman's Dome. The anticipation is building one of the most iconic things on the Appalachian Trail. A lot of people don't get views from up here and we caught it perfectly. Perfect weather window. We're going to have amazing views as you can see already out here beside me. It's a little bit windy. Getting a raindrop here too but no clouds so I'm good with that. I cannot wait to show you guys. Alright, we have made it to the highest point on the Appalachian Trail. We pushed really hard to get here for this weather window. We're currently at 6,664 feet. Let's see what we are when we get to the top of this bad boy. 
Man, this is like a cakewalk compared to the mountain I just climbed to get up here. All right. Short little walk to the top size. Of, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you about this. You know, the pictures of Klingman Dome makes it look like this massive, huge structure. It's not really that big. <laughs> I was super surprised at how small it was when I stood at the base of it. Because it looks like this big old giant thing in pictures. But it's not. But it's really cool. Because we're at the highest point that you could possibly be at on the Appalachian Trail. Six thousand seven hundred right now. Six thousand seven hundred feet. Let's see where we are at the top. Six thousand seven hundred and eight feet up at the top. I don't know how well you guys can hear this. I'm trying to block the microphone so only you hear my voice, but three hundred and sixty degree views. I'm walking a circle right now so you guys get the whole experience. Very cool. Alright. There's signs here. This is the western view. This is your southern view. Come over here. This is your eastern view. So very cool. And last but not least, that is the northern view. Fantastic. All right. Well, we still have a good three or four miles left in our day. So we're gonna take some pictures. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. We really pushed hard to get here in this weather window so that you could have a view. It's absolutely amazing. Guess what that is. We officially hit 200 miles on the Appalachian Trail, day 13. Man, absolutely amazing. 200 miles on the Appalachian Trail and we celebrated it with a trip to Klingman's Dome. All right, we are descending from Klingman's We've got a couple miles out to the campsite. This is going to be the longest day so far. We're not going to get there until about 5 30, 6 o'clock, but that's okay. It's going to be just short of 20 miles. I did the 20 mile day into Dick's Creek Gap. This is going to be just short of that as far as 18 miles go. Definitely going to be doing over 20 miles considering the hike up out of last camp, the walks down to water. The walk up to Klingman's Dome, all those are not 18 miles, but just short of eight, there it's I think 19.6 when we get to camp. And then there's a walk down into the camp. So, but we're pushing daylight. So we're gonna get the last little bit of this climb done. The environment has completely changed. It's crazy how the environment changed once we got over 6,000 feet. It's still all that green mossy and like cedar type trees. So it's almost like a different type of forest than we were in before, which I imagine it's going to change back once we drop down out of this elevation. We're still at above 6,300 feet of elevation, slowly, slowly descending. Very rocky path, so we can't go too fast. All right, we're going to get the last couple miles in, and I'll show you guys the place where we're going to camp. That is the end of our 19.6 mile day. Definitely we did over 20 miles with the extra trips to like Klingman's Dome, water, all that kind of stuff. But um, we're here at Mount Collins Shelter. It's got a nice little tarp that should block the wind, keep us nice and warm. I'm gonna get some food. I'm gonna get in my mattress and I'm gonna go to sleep. I'm tired.